Welcome to this video on business KPIs. The other day I was talking with one of my clients who has recently started his own business, and I realized that he doesn't really know what KPIs are and how you use them to grow your business. So to help him and other people who are thinking of starting a business or who recently started a business and want to grow, I created this ebook covering all the KPIs you should know before starting a business to become profitable and to grow your business. Down in the description box below, there's a link to this free ebook it's totally free, so go ahead and download it if you want to read all about these KPIs and how to grow your business. I am making this video series for the people who are more visual learners and the people who want more examples to really understand how these KPIs work, how you calculate them, and how you can apply them to your business. I'm using both product-based and service-based businesses as examples, so it should apply to everybody equally. Down in the description box below, you can also find timestamps so you can more easily move around the video and go to the sections that are interesting to you. I will also make one video covering all the sections in one go, which is going to be a very long video, and I'll also split it up into smaller sections for the people who have a shorter attention span. Links to all of these videos are down below. Finally, at the very end of the video, you will find a bonus section that covers a spreadsheet I've made, which is basically a KPI calculator. With By simply filling in some of the information yourself, all the other KPIs will be calculated automatically. So you, it should be easy for you as well to quickly apply all of these KPIs and really know what your business is like, what the return will be like, and which parts of the business you can improve. A link to the spreadsheet can also be found down in the description box below. And again, it's totally free. So go ahead and download it if you want to use this. Without further ado, let's start with the first section. Business KPIs for Beginners and Small Businesses, part one. As I mentioned, these videos will cover KPIs that don't expect any prior knowledge to business. This first section will cover the KPIs you should know before starting a business. Again, you can start a business without knowing any of these KPIs, but knowing these will significantly increase your odds of success. Uh, in this section, we will cover these KPIs. I'm not gonna go through all of them in detail, but I will use an example case, which in this case is a barbershop, to illustrate all of these points, how you calculate them and how you use them. This first slide focuses simply on cash and cash burn, which I think are the two most important KPIs or the two most important business metrics that you should know. What is cash? Cash is the money that is in your wallet, in your cash register, or on your bank account. Basically money that you have access to immediately and that you can use to pay for all your bills. There are ways to start businesses without spending any money. And if you're interested in that, please leave a comment down below and I will make videos about that. But for the most part, almost every business has some costs, whether it's salaries, rent, utilities, internet fees. Usually there are some costs you have to pay for. So in order to pay for these, you need cash. Of course, there are different ways to earn cash. Most businesses earn cash by selling something to customers and customers paying them. Some businesses, however, don't get money immediately. Um, let's say if for most B B um, B2B businesses or businesses that sell to other businesses, they might do so on credit. They might sell a service today and they might only get the money one month later. In that, case, in that case, it's not cash because you don't actually have the money in your pocket yet until you get it one month later. Of course, you can also get loans or you can get investments from other people that help you get some cash in the beginning. Cash burn is the amount of money or the amount of cash that you spend in a certain period. Most businesses operate on a monthly cycle. Of course, you can calculate all of these figures that we're mentioning in this video and in the, in the other videos in the series on a daily, hourly, weekly, monthly, annually, quarterly. You can calculate them on any given period, but most businesses will do their books, their accounting on a monthly basis. So that's what I will use for all of these videos too. So. How do we calculate cash and how do we calculate cash burn and how do we use it? Cash is something that you should know simply by looking at the money you have in your wallet, cash register and bank account. So we start with the cash at the start of the month and cash at the end of the month. In our example, that is 10,000 is what we have at the start of the month and 8,000 is what we have at the end of the month. By knowing these two figures, we can see that the difference is $2,000. So basically we have spent, somehow we have spent $2,000 in the month, which is our cash burn. It's possible that we have spent even more money than this, but at the same time, we have received money by selling our products or services. But the point of this is that the way we are currently doing our business 
we are losing $2,000 in cash every month, which means our cash burn is $2,000 a month. By knowing this figure, we can calculate how many months or how many weeks or days or years we have left with our business before we go bankrupt. How do we calculate that? If we know how much cash we have left at the end of the month, which is $8,000, and we know that on average, we lose $2,000 a month, we can divide these two figures. We take the end of the month, 8,000, divided by 2,000, meaning we have four months left worth of cash. Unless we improve our business, we will know that in four months time, we will have $0 left on our bank account, meaning we are bankrupt because we are no longer able to pay for our costs. This is a very simple calculation, but you can also use it in more complicated manners if you have, for instance, many more expenses, such as salary, utilities, rent, um, costs you have to pay to acquire your goods, uh, your shipping fees. The principle is the same, but you can use all of this information to calculate your future cash burn. If I know that next month I will hire three additional people and each of them will cost $1,500 a month, I know that next month my costs, my expenses will go up by $4,500. And if I, ex if I expect that my revenue, the amount of money I earn will only increase by, increase by 3,000, that means my cash will burn $1,500 faster than what it did this month. So as you can see, you can use this cash burn to calculate not only what your cash burn from the previous month or what you expect for this month, but even for, fu for future months. And this will help you to know how much more money you need to earn or if you need to get a loan or investments to help sustain your company longer until it becomes profitable. That was a long story about cash and cash burn, but I really want you to understand these two metrics because but cash is basically the blood, the heartbeat of your business. Then moving on to the things that a lot of more people are familiar with, which are the price, revenue, cost, and profit. For our example, we will use a barbershop and we will keep it very simple. The barbershop offer only, offers only one service, which is a haircut. The price for the haircut is the same for men and women, which is $30. In this case, we expect in our first month to have 100 customers. So we want to know how much revenue we earn. Revenue is the amount of money that the customers pay to us in a certain period. It is slightly different from cash, as I mentioned before, because if we sell a service or a product right now and the customer pays us right now, cash and revenue is the same. Let's say in the case of the barbershop, we sell to one customer, he pays us $30 for the haircut and he pays it right now, then the cash and the revenue is $30. But let's take an example where the customer gets our haircut right now but he only pays us one month later. In that case, the revenue is still $30 because we actually earn the money right now, but we don't get paid until next month, which means the cash is zero, even though the revenue is $30. In the case of our barbershop, we expect 100 customers in the first month, so we can calculate how much revenue we get this month, which is the price, the average price, which is $30 times the number of customers, which means 30 times 100 equals $30,000. In order to accommodate, in order to service all these customers, we need to hire one person. So we hire one barber and his salary is $1,500 per month. In this case, we can also calculate the cost of goods sold. What is the cost of goods sold? The cost of goods sold is how much it costs you every time you sell this product or service that you are offering. In the case of our barber shop, the only cost of goods sold we have is the salary of the barber because we're not offering any extras. For instance, we are not washing their hair. We are not using disposable razors that we have to replace every time we serve as a customer. We don't use wax. We don't style, it, style their hair. So the only cost we have is the salary. In this case, $3,000 revenue minus the salary of the, the barber which means 3,000 minus $1,500 equals $1,500 left that we have that we can use for the, the other costs of the business, such as rent, utilities, taxes, and others. We call this figure the gross profit. So to make it simple, the gross profit is your revenue minus your cost of goods sold. So basically how much you get from customers when they purchase your, good or, your product or service and minus the costs you have for fulfilling that product or service. 
what you have left is your gross profit. But from there, you still have to deduct the other expenses. Expenses is another word for costs. So we will use both of them simultaneously or interchangeably. We know that for the barbershop, all the other costs are $1,200. In this case, we can calculate our net profit, which is the $1,500 gross profit minus the $1,200 rent, utilities, taxes, and other costs, leaving us with $300 at the end of the month. This $300 is the amount of profit that the business owner has made. The business owner can decide what to do with that money. Do they want to reinvest in, into the business? Do they want to use it to increase their expenses? Do they want to take it out as dividends and pay themselves? These are all decisions that the business owner can make. When most businesses talk about profit, they talk about net profit. But it's good to know for your business, what is your gross profit and what is your net profit? Going to the next slide, we can see the gross margin and the net margin. What, is the, what do these mean? When you know your gross profit, when you know your revenue, gross profit and net profit, you can calculate these margins. Your gross margin is simply your gross profit divided by your revenue, and your net margin is simply your net profit divided by your revenue. You can see that in the case of our barbershop, the gross margin is 50% and the net margin is 10%. What these mean is that for each product or service we sell in our barbershop, 50% of it is what we have left for gross profit. And 10% is what we will have left at the bottom line. At the end of all the, after all the costs have been deducted, 10% of whatever we sell is what we will keep as our profit. These two metrics are very important to know to see how profitable your business actually is. And most of the time, you want to improve these margins if you want to become more profitable. A lot of people focus on getting more customers and doing things like increasing the revenue, but Improving your margins is usually an easier way and a quicker way to actually make your business more profitable. To give you an idea for a service-based business, you should aim to have a gross margin of about 80%. The way you can achieve that is either by increasing your price or reducing your costs. The final thing I want to mention in this section is your break-even point. Break-even point is the point at which your revenue and all your total costs are the same meaning that you are earning enough revenue to pay for all the costs, all the expenses that you have in a certain period. This way you are not losing money in your business with your business. To use the barbershop again as an example, we know that the salary is $1,500 a month. We know that all our other expenses are $1,200. So our total costs within a month are $2,700. In this case, if we don't earn $2,700 in that same period, we will be losing money. However, if we earn more than $2,700, we will be able to make a profit, which is extra money that we have left at the end of the month that we can use to pay ourselves or reinvest in the business. So now that we know our break-even point, we can then calculate what the price of our product should be and how many customers we need to service every, every month in order to, be, to reach that target. So it helps you set a target for your business in a certain time period. Let's assume that the price of a haircut is $100. To reach our break-even point, we need 27 customers because we, have a, we need a revenue of $2,700 divided by $100 for each haircut, meaning we need to get 27 customers. On the other hand, if the price of our haircut is $50, we need double the number of customers, which is 54, in order to reach the same total revenue. By knowing this break-even point, it helps you know to set your targets and it helps you know quickly if your business is profitable or not. That's all for the, this section of the, of the video. And we will now move on to the next section, which are the KPIs that you should know to become profitable. I will mention it one more time, but you don't have to know these KPIs to run a business. But, help, but knowing these KPIs will help you quickly identify which areas in my business are weak which areas can I easily improve? And how can I turn an unprofitable business into a, into a profitable one? These are the ones we will go through today. We will use the metrics that we used in the previous section or in the previous video. So if anything seems unclear, be sure to check that. As always, there are timestamps in the description box below, and there's an ebook version and a, and a spreadsheet to help you calculate and understand all of these in more detail, also in the description box down below. We will continue with 
our service-based business, our barber shop. And later in this section, we will also cover an e-commerce shop to illustrate the difference between a service-based business and a product-based business. For our barber shop, the figures we should know before we're able to calculate any of the more advanced KPIs are the first five mentioned on this slide. The price of our haircut is $30. We need to know how many customers we have on average in a certain period. As always, we are working on a monthly basis. So in the case of our barbershop, we want to know how many customers, unique customers are we getting in a month? Which means if one customer comes twice in a month, we only calculate, we only count him as one customer. So the metrics we need to know before we can calculate any of these are the average revenue that we get each time we sell, in the case of a barbershop, we only sell a haircut. So it's very simple. It's $30 per haircut. We want to know how many customers we have within a month. And we want to know how many new customers are we getting every month? And how many of our old loyal customers are we losing every month? The gross margin is something that you can use to calculate your profits instead of calculating your revenues. By knowing all these number figures, as you can see in the presentation, we can then calculate our churn and lifetime value. Churn is a term that is very, very unfamiliar to most people, but that is highly, highly valuable to growing your business. Churn means the percentage of customers that are leaving you or that have left you. In the case of our barbershop, we can see that 100 customers is the average that we, we had last month. And this month, we lost 10 of those customers meaning our churn is 10%. We calculate that by dividing the number of customers we lost divided by the total number of customers we started the month with. By knowing this figure, we can calculate many other KPIs and improving this figure usually improves your business significantly. There are many ways in which you can improve your churn, but we're not going to cover those in this video since we're only trying to cover all the KPIs and how you can use them. But if you're interested in knowing more about churn, be sure to leave a comment down below and I will make a video about that too. The next point I want to illustrate is your lifetime value. A lot of people assume that a, cust that a customer in our barbershop is only worth $30 because when they come, they will get a haircut and they will pay $30. But that's not exactly the case. As you can see from our figures, a lot of customers are actually coming back more than once. And that helps us calculate our lifetime value. To make it simpler to, for you to understand, think about Netflix. If every customer that has a subscription with Netflix would only have the subscription for one month and get the basic package of $12, in that case, a customer is only worth $12 to Netflix because they only pay one time. But as we all know, most of us have subscri subscriptions for longer times with Netflix. Let's assume that everybody on average has a su subscription for one year. In that case, we will pay 12 months, so 12 times $12, meaning each customer is worth $144 to Netflix. In the case of our barbershop, the way we can calculate the lifetime value is by taking the average price, which is the $30, and dividing that by the churn or the percentage of customers that are leaving us on a monthly basis. As you can see, by dividing 30 by 0.1, the lifetime value of a customer is $300. I will mention it one more time. This is not the money that a customer will pay you every time they come, but instead it's the amount of money that the customer will pay you as long as they do business with you. There will be customers who only come once and on the other hand, there will be customers who will, who will come many more times on average. But on average, from our current figures, we can see that each customer is worth about $300. If we know our gross margin, we can also calculate the lifetime gross profit per customer, which is 300, the lifetime value times the gross margin, which means for each customer that we are able to get, we expect $150 worth of gross profit over the entire lifetime that they are doing business with us. These figures help us calculate our hypothetical max. This is not necessarily the name of the KPI, but this is how I like to call it. Basically, it shows you the max potential of your business. The way we know that is by knowing our churn and using some of the other metrics we have for our business. This will show you the power of knowing your churn and why it's very important to calculate this in your business. 
we can calculate the maximum potential our business has in terms of how many customers we are able to service, the lifetime value of each customer, and the total revenue we expect for this business. To show you the calculations, for the maximum customers our business will service, we take the new customers that we get every month and divide it by the churn. So we are expecting with our barbershop 15 customers every month, 15 new customers every month, divided by the 0.1 churn, leaving us with under 50 customers. The lifetime value is what we calculated earlier. And with the revenue, the way we calculate that is taking the average price, which is $30, times the new customers that we get on average every month is 15, which gives us a $450. And dividing that by the 0.1 churn leaves us with $4,500 revenue. What exactly do these figures mean? These figures mean that if we don't change anything in our business, we don't get worse and we don't improve, our business will continue to grow or shrink until we reach these numbers. As you can see with our barbershop, the max, the number of customers we have right now is 100, but our potential is 150. So as long as we continue to do our business as we are doing now, we will continue to grow until we reach 150 people. Once we reach 150 people, we will no longer grow. It's possible that we can get some more customers, but we will lose them at the same speed as that we are getting them. And as a result, we will not grow past 150 customers. The same is true for the lifetime value and for the revenue. So right now our business is doing $3,000 worth in revenue, and we will continue to grow until 4,500, and we will not exceed that figure. The only way we can increase these figures is if we improve our business somehow. And I will mention that toward the end of this section, how you can improve your business. Now I want to show you a product-based business, and I want to show you a negative example of a business that is actually going to decrease simply by knowing your hypothetical maximum or your potential. The numbers that we should know before we can calculate any of these are the revenue, the number of orders, the number of current customers, the number of new customers, the numbers of number of customers lost, and the gross margin. If any of this goes too quickly, then please go back to the start of our barbershop example by using the timestamp down below. I'm assuming now that you understand what these figures mean. And by knowing these figures, we can calculate the average return revenue per user, the average order value, and the churn. I didn't mention average order value and average revenue per user in the service-based business in the barbershop because we made it a very simple business. And the average order value is not so relevant for a service-based business because most of the time, the price for our service is the same for every customer. When we are dealing with products, we usually offer more products than one. So as a result, people might buy a combination of different products. And that's why average order value is much more relevant for an e-commerce or a product-based business than it is for a service-based business. Coming back to our example, you can see that we have a revenue of $5,000. Dividing that by the number of orders of 1,000, we can see that each order on average gives us $5 in revenue. But each user, each customer is worth $10 because, because on average, each customer is making two purchases a month. So the way we calculate this is $5,000 revenue divided by the number of customers in a month equals $10. This quickly shows you that there's a difference between the number of sales we made, the number of orders or purchases, and the number of customers. And both give you different information and you can use this information in different ways to help grow your business. The churn is something we calculated before by taking the number of customers we lost this month and dividing that by the number of customers that we started with this month. As you can see, our e-commerce business is losing about 16% of its customers every month. By knowing these figures, we can calculate the lifetime value, the gross profit, and the potential of our business. The gross margin for the e-commerce shop is a bit better than the barbershop at 70%. There's one more thing I didn't mention in the previous few slides, which is CLV. CLV means customer lifetime value. And Generally speaking, it's exactly the same as lifetime value. It's just a different way of saying it, and most businesses calculate it the same way. In my examples, CLV and lifetime value are exactly the same. 
you can see at the bottom of the slide that the potential for the e-commerce business is 312 customers total, a lifetime value of $62.50, and a maximum revenue of $3,125 a month. But you know from our results that the business right now is doing better. So what does this mean? It means that we are losing, we are probably losing many more customers than that we are able to acquire, which is true from our figures. We are only getting 50 new customers every month and we are losing 80 customers a month. So as a result, our business will continue to shrink. And it, again, it shows it with the hypothetical max. We will go down from 500 customers to 312 and we will lose revenue from 5,000 to $3,125 a month. So even though you might look at your business right now and think these figures are pretty good, if you don't dig one level deeper and see how many customers you are getting and losing and what their churn rate is, you would not know that your, that your business is actually going down and you're actually in a tough situation. Think about it this way. You might be assuming that you'll continue to earn this amount of money every month and you start spending money maybe $4,800, leaving you, leaving you with a $200 profit. But because, you've, because you know your churn right now, you will know that you will, your business will actually go down. And if you don't lower your expenses as well, or you improve your revenue, you will actually start to make a loss next month and a few months after that, because you will continue to go down until you reach this hypothetical max. Then we will go on to customer acquisition costs, which is more of a marketing term, but I feel it's important to know as well for operating your business. Many of us spend money on sales and marketing, and we can, by using, by using this information, the total amount you spend on your marketing and advertising and the total amount you spend on your sales, divided, dividing that total figure by the number of new customers you get a month, you can calculate your CAC or your customer acquisition cost. This is especially important for online businesses and product-based businesses that deal with many more customers. With service-based businesses or, or businesses that have few customers, it's still a relevant figure, but it's not as important as the ones that try to scale more quickly. Having said all that, why do you want to know your customer acquisition costs? Let's use our e-commerce business as an example, as you can see on the slide. If we go back and we calculate our average return per user or our average order value, we can see that $5 and $10 is what we get on average. So we might assume that by spending this amount of money and seeing that each customer costs us about $35 in marketing and sales costs, that we would be losing money on every order. But because we've calculated our lifetime value and also our lifetime gross profit, we can see that the CAC is still below those two figures. So even though we spend money upfront to get a customer, by keeping this customer long enough, we will be able to make a profitable return. So if these figures stay the same, it's actually worth it to spend this amount of money on Facebook, Google, and on flyers to get more customers. On the other hand, if our customer acquisition cost was, let's say, $50, it might still be below the lifetime value, but it's actually above the lifetime gross profit. In this case, it's usually not worth it to spend this amount of money to get a customer. And you would either have to decrease the cost you spend on your advertising and sales by becoming more efficient, or you have to increase the amount of money that you earn from each customer so that it's still worth it. If under the assumption that your customer acquisition cost is $50, it seems like you are making a profitable return because you're getting more revenue over time but you forget that you actually have to spend quite a bit of that money as well to fulfill your service or product to the customer. So as you can see, knowing your customer acquisition costs can help you quickly decide if you need to improve your marketing somehow, or you need to increase the amount of money that you get from each customer. So it's slightly different metrics that you can use compared to the hypothetical max and your churn rate. And the final part of this section is to help you understand and know how you can grow your business. By calculating all these KPIs we calculated so far, you can quickly identify which part of your business is the weakest and which part can give you the biggest return. Most people always think that they should get increase the number of new customers that they get. 
but actually there are other ways in which you can increase it, as you can see on the slide. If you want to increase your revenue, there are generally three ways you can do that. One is the number of new customers, which is what most people try to do. The second is the average revenue per user, which means the amount of money that each user spends in a certain time period. And the final component is the churn rate. By either increasing the new customers or the average revenue you get per customer, or lowering your churn rate, you are able to increase the revenue that your business gets. If you want to focus on increasing your profitability, it's more important to focus on your gross and net margins. As I mentioned in the previous section or the previous video um, covering the KPIs you should know before starting a business, I mentioned there that gross and net margins can be improved by either reducing your costs or increasing your price. To make more people buy your product when you increase your price, you of course have to increase the value for your business. If you want to know more about that, be sure to leave a comment below and I will make a video about that too. As you can see, you've got different ways in which you can improve either the revenue or the profitability of your business. In the description box below, you will find a calculator that can help you quickly, quickly calculate all these measures and can help you see if you should focus more on your churn rate or your ARPU or your number of new customers when trying to increase your revenue. Just keep in mind for now that there are different ways to do it. So you don't have to try and do it the same way everybody else does, which is get more new customers. Now I'll we'll move on to section number three, which is business KPIs for beginners and small businesses, covering the KPIs you should know to grow your business. If any of this seems unfamiliar, be sure to check the previous sections or the, pre or the previous videos by checking the description box below where you can find all the timestamps and links to earlier videos and sections. Today we will cover only a few KPIs, but we will cover some bonus formulas that can quickly help you grow your business. To start off with, with our barbershop, we will keep the figures the same as we used in the previous section. The number of new the number of customers we have at the start of the month is 100, meaning about 100 customers are coming to our business on average every month. We during this month we acquired 15 new customers, but we lost 10 of our old loyal customers. The number of new customers that came to us via referral, via word of mouth, or an introduction from somebody else is 12. By knowing these figures, we can calculate our retention rate and our referral rate. Retention rate rate means the percentage of customers that we had before that came back to purchase again. It's basically the opposite of the churn rate. If you're unfamiliar with the churn rate, be sure to check the previous section or previous video by clicking on the timestamps or the video link in the description box below. So you can calculate it in two ways. Either you take the 100% minus the churn rate, or you calculate it by taking your current customers minus the customers you lost which is 100 minus 10 equals 90, and dividing that by the customers you started with, which is 100, leaving you with a 90% retention rate. Again, you're basically looking at the same thing as a churn rate, except from a different perspective. The referral rate shows you the percentage of your customers this month that came via a referral or an introduction. The way we calculate that is by taking the number of referred customers, which is 12 for our barbershop, and dividing that by the total customers we ended the month with. Since we haven't calculated that yet, we do that for our barbershop by starting with our 100 customers at the start of the month, adding 15 customers that we acquired during the month, and then deducting the 10 customers that we lost, showing that we have a, a total of 105 customers at the end of the month. 12 divided by 105 equals 11.4% or 0.114. There are different ways in which we can acquire new customers. Of course, we can do it via paid advertising like Google or Facebook. We can do it by using social media um, such as TikTok, Instagram, Line, Facebook. Um, we can also have an email list. These are like digital ways. Then offline, you again can do it via advertising, 
for instance, uh, flyers or billboards. We, but we can also do it via word of mouth and referrals. And all of the methods I mentioned so far is basically a linear increase. So if we spend $1 in each of these, we will be able to calculate how much we get as a return. If we spend $2, we, we will probably just double the return we get. But referrals or word of mouth is basically free marketing and free advertising. And the way we get that is by having a product or a service that provides more value to the customer than what he's paying for. If the customer thinks, if the customer really appreciates your product and service, and he thinks that he got a, he got a bargain, that he spent less than what he actually received in value, he is more likely to refer this business to a friend. Some people try to have campaigns or set up campaigns with their business where they incentivize their loyal customers to refer their business to their friends. Of course, that's a good way to start, but know that if your product or service is so good, so good that customers will refer, will introduce your business to their friends by themselves without you doing anything, you basically don't have to spend any money or incentivize anybody to do it. So knowing your referral rate, if it's a very low figure, let's say less than 1%, then you know that the value you're providing to your customers is not high enough for them to actually refer, to actually talk with their friends about you. So what you would want to focus on is providing even more value, provide, really understanding the needs of your customers and resolving or solving as many of the pain points that your customer has to, to make them feel like they really got a lot um, that was worth their money. If you want to know more about this, be sure to leave a comment below. If anything is unclear, be sure to leave a comment below and I will make a specific video about that. Right now, I simply want to let you know about the KPIs. Also in the uh, ebook, for which you can find the link in the description box below, I mentioned more about the referral rate and the retention rate. Moving on to startup capital and return on investment. Most businesses start with some money already. In the case of our barbershop, we invested $50,000 to start this business. Some of that money got spent to acquiring a location or paying rent or renovating or buying equipment. So some of that money we might not have anymore, but we started a business with $50,000. As we calculated in the first section or in our first video about KPIs, which you can find in the description box below, we, our business is making $300 net profit at the end of the month. On an annual basis, if we don't improve or reduce the performance of our business, on an annual basis, we will earn about $3,600 in net profit. This allows us to calculate the return on investment by taking the net profit on a monthly or an annual basis and dividing that by the total amount of money we invested in the business when we started. So as you can see, our barbershop is earning 7.2% as a return on our investment by taking the $3,600 annually in annual net profit and dividing that by the 50,000 in startup capital. As I mentioned, we could calculate this in months or in years or in any other time period as well, simply by changing the how we calculate the net profit. When you simply look at the 7.2%, you might think, what does this exactly mean? It helps you in two ways. The first way is it helps you calculate how much, how long you should keep this business running before you have earned back all your money. In the case of the barbershop, by taking the $50,000 it costs us in startup capital and dividing that by our annual net profit of $3,600, we can see it will take us about 14 years before we've earned back all of our startup capital. This doesn't mean that we have lost our startup capital. It simply means that after 14 years, we can take out the $50,000 of our business again, because we no longer need that money since we have earned that same amount of money during that time. Another way to calculate it is by dividing 100% by the percentage of your return on investment. So 100 divided by 7.2 shows you the exactly the same result of 14 years. The second way in which return on investment is a useful figure is if you're comparing adding new services or products in your business or before you start a business or a new project and you want to calculate which one is worth my money and my time. 
So what I mentioned so far in the previous slide is more looking at historical return on investment by using data that you got in the past. The one I'm going to talk about now is doing a forecast to try and figure out what you expect to get in the future before you invest any money of any money or time and see which of these two or three things that you are comparing is worth your time. To show an example with our barbershop, we are thinking of adding two new services. We have shaving for men and we have perms for women. The cost to implement the shaving for men is $12,000. This could be training fees, getting new equipment, um, maybe hiring staff, whatever comes with introducing this new service equals $12,000. For the perms, this equals $15,000. If you think very simply, you would think the shaving for men is a better investment because it actually costs less. But this is where return on investment really shows its power more so compared to the cost. In our example, we introduced shaving for men two years ago. So we have two years worth of data. And we know that after two years, we had a profit, a net profit of $20,000 by introducing the shaving for men. We introduced the perms for women last year. So we only have one year worth of data. And in that one year, we also earned $20,000 worth of net profit. Again, if you do a simple calculation, you will think the perms for women cost 15 and it earned us 20. So we made a $5,000 net profit and the shaving for men earned us 20,000 and it cost us 12,000. So it earned us 8,000 in net profit. Again, this probably means that the shaving for men was worth was a, worth our time and investment more. But as you can see from the return on investment, this is not the case. We calculate the return on investment, as I mentioned in the previous slide, by taking the net profit and dividing that by what it costs us to invest, which is the cost to set up these new services. The shaving return on investment is 167%. The perms return on investment is under 33%. However, the shaving return on investment is based on two years while the perms is based on one year. So to make sure that we are comparing apples with apples with apples with apples and not apples with oranges, we divide the shaving ROI by two so that we can see on an annual basis, on a yearly basis, we are, the return was 83.5%. Now, now you can see clearly that it would have been worth more time and money to introduce the perms rather than the shaving. You might think, how can I use this for my own business? Right now we use it based on data that we had in the past, but you can also make a forecast by talking with other business owners in your industry or by talking with suppliers uh, from whom you're trying to get the equipment. You can get information and forecast make a prediction on how much revenue you will be able to earn, what the cost will be, and what your gross and net profit will be for that service. It might take a day or a week of talking with different people and trying to get information from different sources so that you can make a, a well-educated guess, a calculated guess, or an assumption to see how much you will be able to earn. But think about it this way, by only spending a day or a month or a week in advance of making these quick calculations and figuring out the ROI, you can quickly see, is this a profitable endeavor or not? And how much time would it take me to earn back my investment? Finally, I want to move on to two extra formulas, one being the golden ratio and one being the client finance acquisition. Again, if you look these up on Google, you probably won't find much because these are names that I found from another person that I learned from another person. So I'm using the same phrasing he used, but it's not it's not something like common knowledge. If these are unclear, be sure to check the ebook, which is in the description box below, and you can read everything in a, in a more simple manner. But how to calc how, what these mean, the golden ratio is basically a ratio that you achieve when your referral rate is higher than your churn rate. I made a quick example where the referral rate is 11.4% and the churn rate is 10%. When you reach this referral rate being higher than a churn rate, it means that without spending any money on marketing, because customers are referring you to their friends or to other people, and you're getting new customers that way, which is all free word of mouth marketing. And at the same time, 
the number of customers that are leaving you is lower than the number of customers you are getting every time from referrals and introductions, your growth is basically infinite because you are acquiring more customers for free compared to the customers you lose. That's why we call this the golden ratio because you basically have gold in your hand and all you have to do is simply keep going and keep doing business the way you are doing. The last formula I want to introduce to you is, called, is what we call client finance acquisition. The way we calculate this is two times your cost of acquisition and your cost of goods sold should be smaller than your 30 day cash. We are mentioning cash and not revenue because it's very important for this type of acquisition because it means that for each customer, the cost, it, what it costs us to acquire a customer is half the price of what we get from that customer. To give you simple examples, you can see two times a cost of acquisition of $5 and a cost of goods sold of $15 equals $40. But our 30 day cash of what we get from that customer is only 30 day, it's only $30. On the other hand, we can have a $3 cost of acquisition and an $11.50 cost of goods sold, which when we double that is $29, which is lower than the value that we get from each customer of $30. As I mentioned at the bottom of the slide, the income and cash of each new customer pays for itself and for the next customer. You might still think, how does that exactly work? If we take that first example, it costs us $20 to acquire a customer, and we are only getting $30 back. We spent 20, which means we're at minus 20. We get 30 back, which means we are plus 10. But in order to acquire the next customer, the second customer, we would need $20 and not 10. So the first customer would put us at minus 20. Then we would get 30 from him, which is plus 10. And then we would spend 20 again, which puts us at minus 10. So as you can see, because we go to minus and minus, we would every time have to invest some money. And over time, it's still a profitable return because we get $30 back for every $20 we spend. But in the beginning, we would have to invest some money. On the other hand, in the second example, you can see it only costs us $14.50 to acquire a customer. So when we, when we acquire him, it's at minus $14.50. When we get money, which is $30 from that customer, it puts, up, it puts us at plus $15.50, which leaves us with more than enough to get acquire the next customer because the next customer only costs $14.50, which puts us at a plus $1. All of this might seem still a bit unclear, so if it is, I suggest you to download the ebook and read it through in your own pace, at your own pace, or to rewatch this section, or finally to use the, the calculator where I calculate most of the KPIs. Clients finance acquisition is not something that you need to necessarily worry about for your business. These two formulas, both the golden ratio and the client finance acquisition are simply ways that if you are able to achieve them with your business, you will be able to grow and scale very quickly and exponentially. This concludes the final section of the presentation. Before I move on to the bonus section, which is the calculator or the spreadsheet I made that you can download for free by clicking on the link in the description box below. If you have any questions or anything seemed unfamiliar, be sure to leave a comment in the comment section below or send me an email and I will try to make more content for you, more videos for you, or to create more resources that you can use to help you calculate all of this. Then the final bonus section is this KPI calculator. Again, the link to, to this spreadsheet is in the, in the description box below. I made it a read-only file, so you're not able to modify it unless you create a copy and save it to your own Google Drive. The way to do that is by click, the text right now is in Dutch, but it basically works the same for every language, is by going to File and click Make Copy. And that way you can make a copy and send it to your own, um, to your own folder. Of course, you can also click one of the download buttons in case you want to use Microsoft Excel or something like that. Import is another way in which you can import it to a different part of your Google Drive. 
Now for the explanation. I pretty much put all the KPIs, except the customer finance acquisition, I put them all in one spreadsheet. Depending on your resolution, you will be able to see everything in one overview. But for some other people, you might be might have to scroll a little bit to see more. The yellow boxes are the boxes you have to fill in. All the other boxes will be calculated automatically. As you can see, I've divided them in different head headers. You've got your cash, where you simply need to fill in the cash at the start of the month and the end of the month. And it will calculate the cash burn and how many months you have left before you go bankrupt, if you continue to do business like this. The break-even point, which will calculate for you if you in, if you indicate what your total costs are, the average price, and how many units you need to sell in order to reach that. Total costs will actually be calculated by adding the costs you mentioned here in the revenue and profit column. But you can, of course, manually input it as well. The revenue and profit section shows you the revenue, the units sold, the average price. You, the cost of goods sold is something you need to fill in as well in your auto cost. But based on these, the profits and your profit margins will be calculated. At least these first three are is something that I feel you should use if you want to start your own business. The other ones are all meant to help you understand your business better, which areas you should focus on, and how to grow your business. But at least for the basics, understand these first three of cash, revenue, and profit, and break-even point. If anything, anything on this spreadsheet is unclear, be sure to either download or check the ebook where you can find a link here or the YouTube video with explanations, which you can, which I will post here once I've uploaded it. The other columns, again, are all explained in the PowerPoint presentations or in the videos I made covering what all these KPIs mean. But your customer acquisition costs will be calculated automatically when you simply input your costs. The referral rate will also be uh, calculate automatically based on the number of customers you know from your referral, re return on investment, your churn rate, hypothetical max, and your ARPU, AOV, and customers. As you can see, all you need to know to really understand your business is the cash you have at the start and end of the month, revenue, your costs, how many you've sold, and then your customers, the number of customers you had, the number of customers you new customers you got, the number of customers you lost. If you are also investing in your business or in any project, it's good to also know how much money you are thinking of investing upfront. You can simply copy this tab many times if you have multiple businesses or you want to make forecasts for the future. If there's enough demand, I might make more tabs based on your feedback. So if anything is unclear, if you feel something is missing, or you would really like it if there was something added, please let me know and I will make that. The final point I will cover are these two columns of KNL. This is simply a summary that helps you decide what the state of your business is in. I didn't mention the profit figures because you can quickly see these here in the revenue and profit. But why I use these is to help you understand which point should I improve in my business? As you can clearly see, how to increase my revenue. You can get more new customers, you can increase the average revenue per user, or you can reduce your churn rate. And over here will be the three figures that will automatically calculate it based on all the information you put in here. How to increase your profitability is by improving your gross and net margins. And again, your current state or your current performance will be mentioned here automatically when you have filled in all the yellow boxes. Finally, is every new customer profitable or not? The way we calculate that is by taking the lifetime value times your gross margin minus your customer acquisition cost. Over here, it will simply show yes or no. If you want to understand more about this metric, you can take a look at the examples that we've gone through in the video. As always, timestamps and videos are down in the link below. Simply here, you can see if you are actually spending more money on acquiring a customer than what that customer is earning you in return. If it says every new customer is no, is not profitable, in that case, either lower your customer acquisition costs or increase the return, the profits that you get from each customer. If it shows yes, you can simply keep doing what you're doing now and your, your business 
every customer that you get should be a profitable return. There's one bonus that is not mentioned in the formula, which is your referral rate. Because the more people you get referred, which should be all be free marketing, should also help you lower your cost of acquisition. This is all for the spreadsheet. And if anything is unclear, be sure to leave a comment in the, in the comment section below or send me an email. And I will be sure to add things or make follow-up videos to help you explain and help grow your business more. That's all for this masterclass on business KPIs. As you can see, we didn't cover any of the marketing KPIs or KPIs for specific departments or parts of your business. But what I wanted to focus on was for you to have a quick grasp and understanding of how can I build a business? How can I understand my business? And how can, how can I grow my business? Too many people don't understand which parts of their business are making them lose money or earn money and which parts should they focus their attention on and which parts are okay the way they are right now. Especially the part about the hypothetical max and the churn rate, I think are, are parts I really hope that everybody can understand. If you benefited from this video and you really liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this and refer to a friend if you feel it was useful for him, for him or her as well. If anything was unclear, on the other hand, be sure to leave a comment below and I will be sure to reply or make additional content or resources that help you not only grow your business, but help you develop yourself and turn your passion into a sustainable source of income, fulfillment, and achievement. I hope to see you all again next time.